go to school with a lot of these girls, you grow up with them, you hang out with them, they're your best friend, and you win and you lose, you share good and bad times. Nothing beats the feeling of winning with them. OTB is here with thanks to AIB, proud sponsors of the Football Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championships, hashtag the toughest. And today we're going to be catching up with Eulart de Ballas, Mary Lacey. Mary, we're here in Eulart de Balla, your hometown, your club. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, I suppose Eulart de Balla is a famous um, GA and Camogie club. Um, it's one that we're, well, I suppose I'm very proud to be long to. Um, I think the GA club here in Camogie Club is, I suppose, the bedrock of the community. We were very lucky with Camogie. We got to play our championship and I suppose the buzz um, we gave to a lot of local people here was just great. And so the, the parish itself, just driving through, it's, it's quite small. It looks quite small. How many people around would live here? Now, um, Owler de Balloch is made up of two half parishes, both Owler and de Balloch. Um, we're a small club. Um, I suppose what uh, something that we're very proud of here is, particularly in our Camogie success, we've won three club all Ireland's, and the three times we've won, everyone was born and bred in Owler. And I think that's, uh, I suppose, a major, um, cr it's major credit to, I suppose, a lot of the families and a lot of the coaches in Owler de Balloch as well. Mary, what age would you have been when you started out here in the club? I was around six or seven. Um, I, my first memory actually of playing a match was an under 10 final here in Owlert. And I remember in the first half, I got hit in my finger. And I remember, I don't know how, but I remember um, playing on. I couldn't even hold a hurl, but I, was, I still played the whole match because I was captain. I remember afterwards I ended up down in Arkeen and I had to get an operation. I broke it in three places. Oh so, my God. I know. And I remember I was actually, it must have been a Friday night because um, that Sunday our hurlers were in the county final and I was delighted. I got out that Sunday out of the hospital and I got to go see. It was the first county final our hurlers won here. So I suppose it was a first memory, but it was a really good memory. So they knew at the age of 10 you were going to be hardy. <laughs> I know. When growing up along, if we had injuries, like I suppose we weren't mollycoddled. And your mom as well, she played for Wexford. She's uh, well known for, as playing for Wexford. So obviously, she obviously influenced you as well. Yeah, Mammy was actually always over us the whole way up along. Um, she was mad about Camogie. She's a lot of awards. We would have always heard growing up, oh my God, your mum would have been as good as any man on the team. <laughs> so I suppose that spurred me and my sister on as well. So what does Camogie mean to the people of Owlert? Um, it means a lot. Um, the people of Owlert have been so good to um, the Camogie team, particularly over the last few years, the amount of um, sponsorship and even the last two years, the support has been immense. We lost a few I suppose um, prominent GA people in the club over the last two years, a few due to COVID as well. So, do you it's know? Tough. Yeah, it is tough, and those people are remembered. And I suppose Camogie and our successes have given people a lift, and it's kind of lifted the spirit of Owler. <laughs> 2020 was a really positive year and successful year for Aulet Tabala. He's went on and won the All Ireland final. Just tell me a little bit about the club championship. Was it an easy run here in Wexford? Um, no, it actually wasn't. Um, we had lost um, 2018 and 2019. So when we met up in 2020, um, we kind of we knew we'd been unlucky the previous year. We we're very disappointed. Um, things didn't go the way we wanted. But 2020, then in the county final, we met the Martins. Um, I suppose that final was a very unique. Um, I was played during COVID conditions. Um, there was no one at the final. That particular day, again, the Martins. Um, we just performed. Everything clicked on the day. Everyone performed and. 
Um, it was a great win and it was a really good lift for the parish because we hadn't, I suppose, seen any silverware in a number of years, so it was great. You won the 2020 county final and then it was 2021 before things got going again because of COVID, but that actually worked out in your favour. Yeah, it was actually ideal for me. Um, just we played the county final in, I think it was September 2020. And shortly after I found out I was pregnant. So um, it was funny because we, the way things were with COVID, we were, we were given a date, I suppose, the end of January to play our Leinster final. So we had to do a lot of online training. So I remember having to get up Saturday mornings and put my screen on or put it on the roof and all, or on the roof in the room, letting on I was doing the training. So that went on for a few weeks, but um, then unfortunately I had to ring my manager and tell him, but he was very understanding, Colin was. What did he say? Um, he was like... No, Mary. <laughs> yeah, but in fairness to him, he congratulated me and um, I suppose, you know, family is important, of course. you know. And Mary, the Camogie Association had planned to abandon the 2020 championship because of COVID and scheduling issues. But thankfully for you, it was played and you won the All-Ireland final in Nolan Park, 4-8 to 2-9 against Sarsfields at Galway. Can you tell me a little bit about that day? Um, it was an unbelievable day. Um, it was a real weekend of celebrations here in Isler de Valloc. We had Stacey Kyo, our midfielder, and our vice captain. She got married the day before. There's not too many brides that do that. <laughs> and it was even remarkable. We always train two nights before a match. And who do you think walked up and togged out and trained the night before a wedding only Stacey Kyo? So, and she got, I suppose, the performance that she put in on the day was unbelievable too. She got player of the match. We were a little bit nervous at the start, but we got a few vital goals and really settled us in. And I think there was no beating us then because I suppose everyone was just given 100%. Anyone who looked at the match, even on TV, they remarked about the appetite, the hunger, the chasing of the girls so we never gave up and our work ethic I suppose was unbelievable and that's what won us all Ireland. The previous two times we won the club all Ireland it was in Crow Park. Our families and friends weren't let out to embrace on the pitch so it was really really nice and I suppose it was really fitting with the times of Covid not getting to see people and all. Stacey having her wedding then the day before like that is unbelievable so were you all there at the wedding? I'm nearly the whole team were at the wedding. Um, it was a lovely day. It was actually, do you know what? In ways, it was great to have that the day for All Ireland because you weren't thinking about the match. You weren't, I suppose, getting really nervous. But as you know, weddings are tiring. So um, a lot of us left. It was we left before nine, but it was funny because some of the girls would be like they wouldn't eat the dessert because they're playing All Ireland the next day. But it was funny <laughs> things like that. But Stacey danced the night away and she had a brilliant day. And it was great to see her then getting the chance then to win All Ireland the next day. It's amazing. Then she went on and put in a player of the match performance. Oh, who would do it? <laughs> um, who would even play the night before their All Ireland? You'd be afraid you get your tan or your nails yeah. damaged, you know? <laughs> but um, I know, and I suppose, um, the night after, we had a great night in the Ballock then and we celebrated both All Ireland and Stacey's wedding. We made up for going home early the previous night. <laughs> <laughs> and coming back here to the club then with the trophy, what was it like for the people and what was the scenes like? It was very unique again, like I have to say, because of Covid, um, when we won All Ireland in December, it was just really the team that was out because um, we actually, you know, I think there was um, COVID regulations at the time and people were just very afraid. So it was actually such, I suppose, a close bond like among the team this time around because we had to train together, we celebrated just to get, like it was just yeah. a team celebrating. It's, it's kind of a memory that all of us will actually remember. And just three months later then, you played in the 2021 Club All-Ireland Final against Sarsfields of Galway again. But unfortunately this time we just didn't get over the line. What was really disappointing was we just didn't perform on the day. I don't think any of us really in the first 15 could actually put our hand up and say we played to our full potential, which is very disappointing. Um, again, I'm not taking from Sarsfields, they were immense on the day. 
Um, very strong, very physical. Yeah, that was disappointing. It just shows the highs kind of and the lows of Camogie as well. We'd just been at such a high from winning All Ireland in December. But it just shows that can happen on any given day. It was such a short period, three months before playing in another All Ireland final. Were you able to get that preparation in that you wanted to get in? Two of our girls got married. Um, Arsenal got married just after Christmas and then I suppose it was time when there was very high numbers of COVID. A lot of our team got COVID as well. So it was very hard. Everyone probably got back for the first training together at the end of January, which was tough. And then we had probably one or two girls kind of suffering a little bit of a long COVID. But I'm not going to take that as an excuse. I'm sure every other team in Ireland that were still training at that time had the same circumstances. To play at such a high level as well, it must be physically tough to play into all Ireland, but mentally and emotionally, it's probably so draining. I suppose there's so much preparation now when you're playing at top level. Uh, physical, I suppose, mental preparation that you have to get yourself, get your head right, get up for a game. And I suppose um, getting over like losing in all Ireland is, I suppose you can say it's dramatic. It's, it's really weird and any probably GA person to tell you when you win in All-Ireland yeah, it could be after being hit 10 times the match you wouldn't feel it but when you lose oh my god your body you're so physically sore you're I suppose to be honest you're sad as well and it took a week or two to just get back up after that and you have four All-Irelands with Wexford you have three with your club so did it still hurt just as much to, to not win that one? Yeah, it did. I think what hurt really was not performing on the day. I think if you perform well and lose, you can just put your hands up, the better team won. You can walk off the yes. pitch and say, look, I, I gave it everything I yeah, could. You can walk off guilt-free, I suppose. But that was the disappointing thing, just to finish off and not perform. So just six weeks after giving birth, you were back out on the camogie field? Yeah, um, six weeks after having um, my youngest, Matthew. To be honest, the management put no pressure on me. I did feel like I was completely ready to get back out there. But through my pregnancy, I got sciatica. So I actually, when I was about 20, 21 weeks pregnant, I didn't think I have a hope of ever coming back yeah. playing camogie, to be quite honest. <laughs> you weren't thinking like that at no, that point. No, <laughs> I definitely wasn't. And it probably did help that our physical trainer, Ray Harris, um, his wife had just had a baby too. Uh, she was heavily pregnant, so he understood. Mm -hmm. He had two other small children. And five months later, you're in the Club All-Ireland final. How did you balance it all between having a newborn and then training for a Club All-Ireland? It was crazy now because in between I had sickness. You could be up all night. With, but I suppose the only good thing I was... I felt like I had no pressure on me and like Camogie wasn't my number one thought every day, even before All Ireland. I remember my husband wasn't he wasn't he was away that weekend, so I had to do bottles and I was so busy that morning for I didn't even get to think about the match until I was nearly in Kilkenny. So I suppose that was good in my Yeah, way. it takes your mind off yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Being able to juggle both, like I suppose us women know how good we are at um, multitasking. Multitasking, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and was there anyone else on the team that had kids as well that sort of understood? Laura and Sean is in a day boat of kids. They're a little bit older, but they knew and they understand. I say they all probably thought it was a bit mad coming back that quickly. Yeah. It's incredible and it just shows that you can keep playing after you give birth and you have a family that that's it's not the end. Yeah, because like I would have friends and to kind of say, oh, how did you leave your child? You know, how do you do that? But you have to have you still have to live yourself. Yeah. And if you're enjoying your hobbies and your pastime, it's, you, it's going to rub off on your kids. Like my little lad actually said to me there last week, he's only three and he goes, are you not going back training, mammy? Yeah. So I just thought it was funny, you know. <laughs> you have four All-Irelands with Wexford. You have three All-Ireland club titles and you have three All-Stars. Mary, if I had to ask you your best sporting moment, what would it be? God, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, I'm going to give you two because I have two very special right. memories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first one was definitely in 2007 when I captained Wexford. I was only 
I was, wasn't even 21, but um, Whoa. I know. <laughs> and there was about 33,000 at the match. I'll never forget running down to Crow Park that day. We were playing Cork. Um, I suppose we were outsiders on the day and we won. It was unbelievable. I'll never forget the crowd on the pitch. The homecoming to Wexford was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it though, I lost my voice. And a second um, special moment, our second club All-Ireland. Um, God, that All-Ireland, it was so tough leading up to that All-Ireland. Um, my cousins, um, Una and I, uh, my um, cousin Angela, um, she lost her son Connor in a road crash just maybe two, three weeks prior to, so it was very tough on our family. And I'll never forget when the whistle went and we went up and we seen Angela. No, it's okay, take your time. God, even I know. I don't know why I'm getting upset now, just telling straight, do you know? But it was amazing yeah. when, when you, the whistle went. Yeah, because like poor Angela was an awful and she came to the match because she wouldn't be even a camogie, yeah. do you know? And her whole family came, it was lovely. But you can see what it means and it's those moments, isn't it? Yeah, so just to kind of link the whole community. And nearly that could be what she needed maybe at that time. Yeah, even just for a minute or two. Yeah. Her, mm -hmm. her heartbreak, I suppose. Yeah. It was just as if the heartbreak just for a minute just kind of stopped. Yeah. Yeah. It's those moments that Oh, like it's those moments that kind of show you as well, like, do you know how important she is, but that there's other things even more important. Um, I suppose my cousin's little lad, Connor, he was hard, he was like mad into hurling. And I, we knew he was up there looking over us and guiding us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So that was just a special, very, very special day, you know, I suppose, for us. And it was just like, even if the heartache just disappeared for a minute, you know, it was just, you know, a nice feeling.